on the floor of Rajya Sabha when the GST bill had to be passed. You know, she, uh, her walkout of her party also uh, had a political role to play. So all of this coming from somebody uh, in Tamil Nadu who's come to virtually rule Tamil Nadu with her charisma, even though she was an outsider. Argument is coming from. I mean, MGR was also from uh, was a Malayali. Uh, as far as Jay Lalita is concerned, she is definitely considered. You know, there's a, a famous Tamil song which says, you know, Na unga vita pillai that uh, you know in an MGR movie, which means uh, I am your child. You know, I am uh, you know the the girl next door. So she has cultivated this. It's not just Sabha rightly pointed out. Yes, it was her charisma and also her welfare bent of mind. But apart from that, she rules with an iron hand. She is not just worshipped by the women, but also by the men who prostrate before her. Uh, she is known to be extremely gracious uh, uh, to her friends, and she is a bad enemy to have as well. The way, the kind of unassailable grip she has over her party, the manner in which she rules her administrative acumen, these are factors in her favour. And yes, the way she plays her politics. She is one person who, who exemplifies uh, the adage that good uh, economics makes good politics. 37 MPs in, in, in the Lok Sabha, that's the third uh, highest uh, number of MPs uh, uh, in the Lok Sabha from in, in, in the country. So certainly she's got uh, you know, great sway over the political firmament in the country and people are hoping and praying for a miracle. She is known to be a comeback queen. People are hoping and praying that she makes a comeback. The problem right now is that uh, she is the government and she is the party. You know, there is, a, and, and even within the government, you know, Tamil Nadu is peculiar for this, that uh, for, for, for longer than I can remember, I've covered Jail yeah. for close to two decades. Uh, and I can tell you that as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, important portfolios like home, home portfolio is always retained by the chief minister. So I don't see any, uh, you know, any alternative, any succession plan playing out in the next uh, few days. Mm -hmm. As yeah, long as know, Sanjay, continues Sanjay Pinto, to be we, on life we will support, actually dwell, uh, I don't think yeah, anybody we, we'll would be dare dwelling to do on that. It's only an interim measure that may be... Briefly, in a little while, because we, we, we are, we've actually spoken in detail about the succession plan here on the news hour. So I just want to get a, a little more from you on the point that we were discussing earlier. You know, firstly, you said that from where do you get this uh, notion that she was an outsider? Well, for someone who was a Brahmin-born woman to take over the reins of a Dravidian party at the time, uh, path-breaking. But also, uh, you know, if you look at what happened after MGR, how often have we seen in Indian politics that when there is a split down the middle in a party, the immediate family is not the one that ends up taking the reins of the party. That is what happened in this case with her fight with Janki for taking over the reins of the party. It was eventually Jai Lalita who walked away with the leadership of the AIADMK. She had earned her spurs even when she was in the Rajya Sabha. People remember her fiery speeches in the Rajya Sabha. She had proved her political metal even when she was in the Rajya Sabha. And, much, and, and you mustn't forget that she was a film star. I mean, a, a film, an extremely popular film star. Right? So she is not somebody who could be wished away. And the fact that she took over the reins of the party almost effortlessly. If you remember, even in the assembly where she was ill-treated and, and manhandled in the assembly, she swore that she would never enter that assembly uh, until uh, she becomes the chief minister. And she lived up to that, uh, to that promise. So she's somebody who's shown uh, you know, nerves of steel, uh, her determination, her grit, her courage uh, against all uh, odds. That's something that has endured, not just a charismatic person, not just somebody who is loved and worshipped, but also somebody who's feared in a good sense, somebody who's been powerful, who's been able to, uh, you know, to have people uh, at her beck and call. She has, you know, even uh, wielded considerable, wielded considerable clout even with the centre and all her, uh, you know, uh, in her uh, uh, coalitions. Even you mentioned about P.S. Sama, she even led an effort to have, uh, uh, you know, a second term for, uh, you know, the late Abdul Kalam. Uh, so she's somebody who cobbled up, and even uh, you know, uh, even in 2014, there was talk uh, that she could even be prime ministerial material with 37 MPs out of uh, out of that, 39. You know, if if only the BJP had not got that majority, right. that, but, you never know. In a coalition was, form yeah, of government, Jayalalitha could have been a big national, got, uh, you know, kingmaker. Because the BJP got 282, there was no opportunity for any coalition leader uh, really to cobble up a coalition together. But definitely among the big players yes. were Mamta Banerjee, Jayalalitha, Nitish Kumar, all of them who had grandiose plans of uh, pitching themselves uh, for a prime ministerial position. And 
Jailalita was very much there. But let me also get in Shahid Siddiqui. Shahid Siddiqui, do you remember the time? Did she make an aberration when she went for that tea party, pulled down the NDA government uh, uh, when she went for that tea party with uh, Sonia Gandhi? But ultimately, in 2002, actually ended up calling her an outsider, a foreigner, and uh, moral bankruptcy for the Congress party to actually uh, field her as a prime ministerial uh, candidate. Uh, she was opposed to, you know, those famous words that she said, Sonia, Antonio, Mino, uh, clearly saying that she was opposed to the Congress party. So was it an aberration in 1999 uh, uh, that she went and uh, for the Tea Party with uh, Sonia Gandhi and uh, then later on uh, turned her back towards her? No, before I uh, answer your question, I would like to say that she, she is one of those uh, women who had the most difficult succession to come over. Unlike Indira Gandhi or Sonia Gandhi or uh, even Mamta Banerjee or uh, uh, Mayavati, she had a situation where she was outsider to the family also. Where she was, I remember when the MDR's body was being taken for, uh, for his last rights, she was pushed uh, away from, from the carrier which was carrying, carrying her and Jan, Jan Ki was not allowing her to come on that. So from that, because of her grit, because of her determination, because of her, uh, you know, willpower, she was able to come back and come back with a bang. Now, coming to 91 and 92 situation, I could see, I, I could, I watched a few things from close quarters at that point of time when Subhanya Swami had his tea party and the, Sonia Gandhi was stopped from uh, becoming the prime minister with her famous 272 thing. Uh, at that time, I could see that Jaya Lalita had no love loss for Sonia Gandhi. He, he wanted to play a major role in central politics. She wanted, uh, and it was she who persuaded Mulayam Singh and others not to go ahead because she thought that Sonia Gandhi, after becoming the prime minister, will dissolve the parliament and will not uh, carry on with the mandate she will be getting from the regional parties. And uh, she was an astute politician. She could see far ahead. But uh, from that on, I could see that she had no liking for Sonia Gandhi. And that continued. And that was one of the reasons that she came close to first Vajpayee ji and then to uh, Mr. Narendra Modi. So she, but she, I can say that she was a leader who was like a Saraswati and a Kali and a Durga combined. She was extremely articulate. I was lucky to meet her in 1991 during the National Integration Council meeting, and I was able to talk to her. And I could see that the woman had so much of charisma that if she was from North India, with the, her kind of articulation, with the kind of the, the way she was able to carry people, she was absolutely prime minister material. But unfortunately, and she had those ambitions. But unfortunately, she also understood her limitations coming from a. a party in Tamil Nadu, she did not push herself very much. And, and, but but uh, of course, she, she was but she uh, definitely she had the profile uh, to play a big role in uh, national politics. Uh, Shahid Siddiqui, she did have the profile to play Absolutely. that big role in national politics. Neerja, Neerja uh, the question is also about the she, relationship she, she shared with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. In 2011, it was Narendra Modi attending her swearing-in ceremony. In 2012, she returned the favor. She went and attended the, the swearing-in ceremony of Narendra Modi in uh, Ahmedabad, uh, in Gandhinagar. Uh, and, and since then, of course, even when he was declared the campaign uh, chief of uh, the BJP, before he was made the prime ministerial candidate, she was very candid to say that he's a good friend of mine. So clearly there's something going on in terms of a very good understanding and relationship between Narendra Modi and uh, J. Jayalalitha. How has that really uh, determined the kind of relationship the BJP now has with the AIA DMK on the floor of the House, whether in Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha? I think you're right, uh, uh, Navika. I was at that swearing in a ceremony in December 2012 when Narendra Modi was re elected as Chief Minister, and she was there at the swearing in. She was put in number one position, the first you know, next to the place where he was being sworn in. And others, Mr. Jaitley, many of the others followed. And she had come with her own chair. 
she left before the whole function was over. She was very much a presence, and we'd heard, of course, that she enjoyed a rare rapport uh, with Narendra Modi. She certainly backed him uh, even before he was declared the prime ministerial candidate. And uh, of late also, you know, he's kept in touch with her. But one thing we must remember, having a rare rapport, everybody used to say that he will be able to bring her around on the GST. But she stood her ground. That was mm. Jay Lalita. If she felt GST was not good for the state, of course, they walked out. They facilitated it to a point. But she held her ground. And you couldn't budge her on any of the things once she had made up her mind. So she, you know, and Anna DMK, to answer your second question, Anna DMK minus her at the helm of a well, she, she comes through this very adverse situation that she is in today. She's not going to be a hands-on CM for a while to come. And without her in that position, an Anna DMK government in Chennai is going to be that much more dependent on the center, which is run by the BJP. How that situation between the BJP and Anna DMK is going to pan out in the months yeah. and years to come. But certainly the government is going mm. to ha have to depend much more on the center. And I think I agree with Mr. Yeah, Raj you know, who said Major, earlier... We, we, that, we, we talked know, about this... That, that, uh, I think we Mr. talked about this briefly earlier. That's exactly, what I said, Mr. Rajagopalan was I talking said. about this earlier. Yeah, yeah. You want to uh, just respond on that, Mr. Rajagopalan? And, and Nirja, point, uh, taking Navika. you from your point, BJP and ADMK no. are natural allies. From southernmost of the country, it is Jayalalitha who gave a call about Ram Mandir. And, and